Alex and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is somewhere that I chat to you about sewing and knitting and all the projects that I've been working on each month and I'm really happy that you could join me today. So I think before we go any further I'll tell you what I'm wearing. This is the Tracer sweater by Jennifer Steingast from Liner magazine and yeah it's something that I knit, I can't remember, a little while ago she, I did it fairly short, it's kind of high hip I suppose and I'll come a little bit closer so that you can see the yoke. Um, I knit this with Let Lopey, so it's a really rustic, very warm yarn. Um, it's something, it definitely has like a prickle to it, but I find I've got a really fine sort of jersey knit top underneath and it doesn't bother me. Once I've got it on, it's, yeah, it's one of those things that once it's on, I'm not thinking about it being irritable or anything. I find it quite comfortable, so... Yeah, it's something definitely for really cold days though. <laughs> it keeps you really warm, this kind of Icelandic wool. So it's not for something, um, yeah, it's definitely like a December, January kind of knit I couldn't have worn. I think this is probably is actually one of the first days that I've worn this sweater this season actually, because it is a sort of something that you will be sweating in if it's a warm kind of day. But um, I'm just gonna apologize about the light before we go any further, because it's probably gonna go in and out um, it's just that time of year, it's, I've got to kind of take it while the sun's here because I've tried to film before when it's getting dark and it's so hot because you just can't see what I'm showing you. So I'm doing it while we've got light but it's fading fast, it's coming down so it's changing all the time and it's going in and out of clouds so apologies about that but it's better that I do it now while we actually got some light that you can actually see what I'm doing. So um, what should I show you? Oh. I've got so many different things to show you. I think, let me start by, as we're in December, showing you some Christmassy bits that I've been working on. I've got this, oh, let me do that so she's not twisting around, um, this little ornament that I've done, and I think it's so sweet. I don't know if you see if I took her to the light that she's got, I could even bring her a little bit closer so you can see that she's got this like embroidery and little sequins and yeah she's just super super sweet she is um who is it it's alicia paulson it's one of her designs and it's from she does these little ornament sets and this is the which one is this i think it's walk in the woods walk in the woods um collection and has the deer, a Christmas tree and a little cottage in the set. So it's just, this is probably the most simple one. It's just two pieces of felt with a blanket stitch and yeah, the little details that I've added, um, which yeah, that's part of the pattern. It shows you where to add the embroidery and the little stitches and yeah, I just thought it was a really cute kind of simple project that didn't take too much brain power. <laughs> so that was not one and I've got another ornament to show you. I hope you can see him because he's tiny but this is a really sweet little mouse. The pattern's called Very Nice Mice and it's a free pattern by Anna Woods, um, Anna Woods Handmade and it's so adorable. I love him. I think he's the cutest. I love this detail. He's got this little um, felted tail and you sort of you just sort of um, cut a thin strip and you actually felt it even more by rubbing it between your hands and then it gives it this like curl. So it's got this really sweet curled um, tail and I don't know if you can see but his nose is pretty neat and that was one of the bits that was so hard. When I started um, to sort of turn him through, I was thinking, oh no, this is not looking pretty. He was not looking cute. His sort of face looked really kind of misshapen and wasn't looking good but this was supposed to be just a fun project so I was trying not to be too precious because I can be a bit of a perfectionist about these kind of things and I don't think anybody else notices any of the flaws so I'm trying to not be so tough about these things and just went with it. Carried on going and when I stitch his little nose you just use a couple of um, threads of embroidery floss to do a V where the nose is and a little line each side for the mouth and it covers everything up. I don't know how it does it because it's just a bit of thread but it really neatens up the whole look so if you ha do have a go at this pattern and as I said it's free so I'll put the link in the show notes so you can all get one and yeah it just hides everything when you do that little V it looks really neat um, but yeah I think he's really cute. You could add like a Bit more thread and you could hang him from a tree it's like really good like christmas tree ornament size 
but I've actually got him, I've got, I don't know if you can see behind me, um, like I kind of put him there with my little like, houses and trees and little ornament bits that I've got. And yeah, he's just really cute. <laughs> if you do want to have a go at um, making your own, I'll put a link below this video to the show notes that I always pop on my blog. So any patterns and yarn and all that kind of thing that I talk about, I'll have links to everything down below the video. And you can also get the show notes to your email. Loads of people like to do it that way. So they sign up um, below this video, you'll see a link to get the show notes email. And basically every time I do one of these videos, I'll pop um, an email to you and just let you know that there's a new video live. And right in that email, I'll put all the details about what I've been talking about in the episode as well. So it's really easy. Um, yeah, and it's just convenient that way. So if you want to get either of those um, in either of those places, yeah, the links will be below. So next, I'll go on to some of the knitting that I've been doing. I'll show you what I finished first. I did, I showed you these last time actually. These were the Cozy Autumn Socks by Olivia of This Handmade Life and they're really beautiful socks. I love this pattern. It's got, I don't even know if the camera will do it justice, but it's got a beautiful cable, really, really simple pattern to knit. Um, but it, yeah, it just has this lovely effect. It's sort of, I think it's actually more of a faux cable to be honest, but yeah. It's really beautiful. The only difference to the original pattern is, oh, don't drop these, is that it's got the one by one rib, which was a mistake. That was because I wasn't well, and yeah, just totally made a mistake and cast on doing one by one for some reason. Um, pattern calls for two by two rib. I always knit two by two rib, so I think I really was ill the fact that I just started doing random one by one. I even knit the second sock, I cast on and knit that with a two by two so I had to do it twice because obviously the socks wouldn't match if that was in a two by two so that wasn't great but I'm really happy with the socks that I ended up with and this is um, the Yarns the Wool Barn and it's in the Burnt Caramel colourway and it's yeah one of her sock bases which I love. You'll see I've got more socks to show you with more wool balm. She's one of my favourite dyers. Um, I'll give you a quick look at those. This is one of my Winter Woods bags, a little sock knitting set. And it has I've got my sock in there, little DPN cozy. Which these are really cute. So many of you have ordered these for Christmas. I'm not sure if you're giving them away as presents, if you've um, maybe doing like travel knitting and you've got them but yeah it's been so nice to have all your orders through over Christmas and over the last couple of months with these Winter Woods bags I love sending them out and I've been getting lots of lovely emails of people saying that they've received them and they're really happy and it just literally makes my day I don't think when you have a handmade business I don't think that will ever go away that excitement of somebody purchasing something from your shop and especially if they come back for something else because that's amazing I know lots of you watching uh, customers that have purchase multiple things from my shop and that just blows me away that's amazing and I'm really really grateful for every little purchase that somebody makes from my shop and yeah I don't take anything for granted so it really yeah just so that you know I do appreciate every little sort of click through to the shop and when you're browsing around and yeah if you make a purchase I'm, it's definitely making my day <laughs> it's true that we all do like happy dance when, when that that order comes through so yeah, let me um, stop gushing and I'll show you what I'm working on. So inside here is my, what's this called? Oh, it's the Feathering the Nest, Feathering the Nest socks. And this is a Danielle George pattern. I've shown you this pattern before because I knit some in the wool barn in the New Girl colourway. And this one is the uh, Strawberry and, Strawberries and Lavender, I think it's called. It's on her luxury base. And this just has, yeah, really subtle kind of texture pattern to it. I'll show you the other side so you can see how the yarn knits up in, um, in a sort of stock in it. But yeah, I love the pattern. I love the yarn because obviously I'm doing this for the second time with this pattern. I'll give you a shot of this of the ball. And um, yeah, I'm. It, I guess they're going to be a set. So I've already got one pair, and this will be the second pair. I'd quite like to do three. I've got like a blue. I've got a blue colourway, um, sort of these speckles, that I think would make a nice set as well. So yeah, that's what I've been working on. That's kind of like my nice relaxing 
kind of travel project that I can take around with me. It's quite simple. Although there is a pattern to it, it's quite a simple one at the moment because I'm on the foot. I'm doing them, actually the pattern is basically cuff down, but I'm doing it toe up. That's just how I really like to do my socks. So um, yeah, I'm at the bit where the foot's stuck in it. So it's only a little sort of 30 or so stitches that I have to concentrate on each um, round. So that's something that I can take out with me. Um, so I've got those. I've shown you my socks. And the only other knitting thing to show you is my, um, it's like a crew neck sweater that I'm improvising. So this is on one of my big sweater bags. I've actually got a couple of these in the shop at the moment. So if you want to have a look, although they won't get there for Christmas, I know people buying these, you don't have to just treat yourself at Christmas. Or you might get some Christmas money and think this is the perfect project bag for you if you like knitting sweaters or you do blankets. But yeah, I'm doing this crew neck sweater and as I said, it's sort of an improvised project. I had seen lots of these like little cashmere crew neck sweaters on Pinterest and well, sort of everywhere, but it was on Pinterest that I was putting together a mood board to show like what I was thinking of knitting and sewing over the winter and autumn season. I'm tangled because I've been good and I've been alternating my skeins so to get a really nice even feel so that's why I've got lots of tangled and I've actually got a pair of needles still in the bottom because I wasn't 100% sure if I wanted to change that let me see if I can just so oh, sorry if I jogged you I'm just going to try and lighten that a little bit sun's already going in this is the problem at this time we're almost at the shortest day of the year actually but this time of year it's probably about half past two and as you can see it's already getting dark but won't waste time talking about the weather. <laughs> I'll just try and show you. I've got one of my sleeves. Got it's got this lovely um coming a little bit closer so you can see that it's got a tubular cast on and it's got this lovely like two by two rib. And this was a feature from the Fiberco's one sweater pattern. I'm using the Fiberco yarn um and I've sort of used their one sweater pattern as a bit of a guide. That's their it's actually made for a worsted weight, so that's why I'm improvising this because this is a fingering weight, so or it might be a sport weight, but it's definitely much lighter than what's called for in the one sweater pattern. But I really wanted that very fine knit sort of look, and I knew that this would give that kind of, although it doesn't have cashmere, it's definitely that luxurious kind of cashmere effect. It is 50% alpaca, 30% wool, and 20% viscous, which I think is from bamboo there, viscous. And that's the Fiberco canopy sure if that show up but it's beautiful and I'll have all the details in the show notes but it's yeah gorgeous yarn it's a sort of very charcoal it's not quite black it's got a lot of depth to it this kind of yarn so it's not a flat color it's kind of shifts and it's definitely a, more of a charcoal but as I said I've used their one sweater pattern as a guide so I have done the tubular cast done and a two by two rib and but then sort of from there I've just because it's a top down sweater I've used the same kind of ratio for um, increasing and for decreasing the sleeves, but I've just gone with my gut and I've tried things on and I've knit. So for example, I knit until I had split for the sleeves and realized that it was much too low the armhole. So I ripped back to the exact point where I thought it would be the perfect place to split for the sleeves and then sort of, um, yeah, just ripped back and did that again. Um, I don't think there's anything much more to say about this. You can see I've done a two by two rib at the hem as well. But yeah, it's just going to be that perfect like little black crew neck sweater that I can pull on and be cosy. But I think it still looks kind of chic to have that look. So yeah, that's one of the main projects that I've been working on since I talked to you. It seems crazy actually to me that I feel like I'm quite far along with that sweater. It almost feels like it's nearly finished and I hadn't even planned to cast that on when I had spoken to you last. So it's, yeah, it's kind of crazy that I've knit that much, but I think because it's just round and round stocking it, I was actually able to knit it quite quickly. And um, because as I said, I was improvising, I had that feeling that I really wanted to get to the next stage so I could try it on and see how it was looking. Because usually, like if you get gauge and you're knitting to a pattern, you know it's gonna come out with 
the same fit and everything as the pattern but with this I'm actually knitting it to be quite a close fitting sweater as well so it's not even using the same kind of ease that's in the one sweater pattern that I was referring to but um, yeah it's just yeah it's been a quite an enjoyable project when I've been tired at the end of the day and I just want something simple I can pull that out and that's sort of what I'm doing at the moment actually most evenings I'm working on that um, that sweater so the only other thing I've got one more thing to show you it's a sewing bit and it's something that I showed you last time actually well I didn't show you but I talked about it I think I'd done the Hudson pants which were the jogging bottoms and this I'll stand up so you can and hold it up a bit further back so you can see it's yeah just a really simple raglan sweatshirt I've done the cuffs and the hem in the same fabric as the sweater you could do it with ribbing but I'm I just I didn't have any ribbing that matched and I thought it looked really good and in the camera you can probably see this it looks like it's really puckered around the edge but in real life it's not looking like that I think it's like on camera it just the light picks up every little detail but yeah as I say in real life it doesn't look particularly it looks quite smooth finish I've surged or overlocked all my seams inside so it's a really really quick sew this I did it straight out the packet I think I maybe took one and a half inches off the length just because I'm so petite I knew that it was going to be way too long for me but I did want it still to be quite long I wanted to wear it with leggings so something that was like covering my bum that kind of length and, and a little bit oversized so I just went with the length that was in the pattern really as I say I think I did take an inch and a half off because I just I think I have I can't remember exactly but say every this is a Grain Lunch Studio pattern if I didn't say it's Linden sweatshirt and I think in all their patterns I always take it might be three inches there's like a set amount that I just know for my body size that I always take that amount of um sort of length off and for this I knew that I wanted it to still be quite long but I think I maybe did take out I kind of was able to guess um, from other like sweatshirts that I've got what length I wanted it to be so but as I say apart from that I did pretty much just keep it the same I kept the sleeves the same I didn't take any length off the sleeves which is something I'd usually do but I thought with a sweatshirt you kind of want it to be cozy and a little bit slouchy it's something I might do next time I think that's the only thing I would maybe adjust is to do the sleeves slightly shorter um, just because it's really nice when you make your own clothes that you can get the exact fit that you want so it's like I could have them slouchy but not quite as slouchy as they are now but they're by no means like drowning me or anything and it's a really neat looking sweater so yeah I'm really pleased with how that came out and now I've got some like comfy cozy clothes to wear over Christmas because I've got the jogging bottoms and I'm still on the hunt for some jersey fabric that I could use to do the Avery leggings because I think that's a Helen's closet pattern and I think the Avery leggings are just like finish off the set perfectly and I'm going to do probably why over Christmas actually do the Hud I think it's called the Hudson tee no that was the Hudson pants hemlock that's it there's um a pattern that grain line do called the hemlock tee which I've made that before so I think I'll maybe do one of those to kind of complete the set but yeah with my slowing I tend to take things slowly and don't rush these things I just do it when I feel like it. it's something fun I'm sewing all the time for work so it's nice to if I'm sewing something for pleasure just to kind of take my time with it and do it when I really feel like it so I'm not going to rush that but yeah it's nice to have something to show you this week that I have made progress on my plans to do my little sort of loungewear capsule wardrobe so I'm looking at my table and that's everything I think I've shown you um Thank you so much for watching. This will be the last time I'm chatting to you this year. So I hope you've had a good year and that if you're spending time with family or getting to take a break over the holiday season that you enjoy it and that you're able to fill it with knitting and sewing and all those things that we love. So yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next year. Thanks, bye.